So we'll start out in uh, recline posture with the soles of the feet together, knees splayed out. And if it's easier to come down onto your back and then put your feet together, you could do that. And if this is too much, having your knees like this, you could just rest the soles of your feet on the floor and your knees point up. You do that instead. If you have yoga blocks, you might put them under the outsides of your knees to take the weight of your legs and make it a more passive posture. And your hands might just rest on the floor, might rest on your legs. You could bring a hand to your heart, maybe feel your heartbeat, a hand on your belly, feel your breathing, whatever you like with your hands, close your eyes if you want. Notice your breathing. Just by focusing your attention on it, it will slow down and get deeper. Observe the movements of your breathing and the way those movements feel. Observe how your contact with the ground changes with the movements of your breath, different parts of your back lifting away from the floor and touching down again as your breath moves in and out. Start to extend your observations outward from the central focus on your breathing and its movements. Notice whatever other sensations are present for you in this moment. Scan your body, see what's going on with all the various parts of you. Make particular note of anything that's not feeling so good so that you can keep it in mind and take care of it during practice by skipping or modifying any portion of the practice. And meet yourself where you're at. Find the practice that's best for you. And whenever your attention wavers, just gently bring it back to noticing your breathing and noticing what's going on in your body. Doesn't matter how many times we need to redirect from some distraction, just be gentle. Come on back. Noticing what's going on in your body and taking care of yourself can be our shared intentions. You might be in the habit of setting your own personal intention for practice. If so, now's the time to let that finish forming and sink in for a few breaths. Set your intention. And before we start to move around, let's take three deep cleansing breaths. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth with a sigh. Now to come out of this posture we started in, let your arms help your legs. It's easy to strain something here in your lower body if you try to just move your legs. Let your arms nudge your legs towards each other so the soles of your feet come to rest on the floor. Reach your arms out to the sides. Feel your shoulder blades press to the floor. Cross your left ankle above your right knee. Let your legs fall to the right, turn your head to the left, and keep your shoulders on the ground. Slowly come back up to center. 
cross your legs the other way, right ankle over left. Let your legs go to the left and turn your head to the right. Come on back up to center, uncross your legs, draw your knees towards your chest, hug your knees, and explore rocking side to side or rolling in circles, massaging your low back against the ground. And start to rock front to back. Roll your spine along the ground. If that doesn't feel good, you can tip to one hip and spin up to a seat if this movement doesn't feel good to you. Maybe playing at the top of the rocking if you are rocking back and forth. Playing with balancing there at the top of the movement. Now let's all meet sitting up. And you don't have to sit just how I'm sitting. Sit so that you're comfortable. Maybe it looks like this. Maybe it's different. Feel into the grounding contact of your seat. Feel into the length of your spine. Sitting tall without being rigid or stiff. Let your chin fall towards your chest. We'll take some nice slow circles for our neck. Roll your ear towards your shoulder. And let your head tip back. Other ear towards the other shoulder. Just really take your time. We'll make a few circles in each direction. If you find a spot that's particularly tight, maybe you pause there and rock back and forth. Help undo some of that excess tension. Like untying a knot. Change direction if you haven't already. Maybe you want to change direction more than once. Maybe one side, one direction is doing more for you than the other. When you finish the next circle, Look forward again. Bring your hands out to the sides. Rest your fingertips on the floor. Stay nice and tall. Inhale, raise your right arm alongside your head. And as you exhale, reach to the left. Lean into that left hand. Just let your head be wherever your neck is comfortable. Inhale to come upright. As you exhale, come into a twist. Bring the right hand to the floor behind you. Left hand to the right leg. Inhale, lengthen up, press into the right hand. Exhale, invite your body to twist some more. Just explore that with each breath. See if there's maybe a little further to go. See how much feels like enough. Let yourself unwind, come back through center. Inhale, raise your left arm. As you exhale, reach across to the right, feeling for length from your left hip up through your left fingertips. Good. 
with an inhale, come up right. And as you exhale, come into your twist, left hand behind you, right hand across. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, twist some more. Maybe one side's easier, maybe one side goes a little further. Come back through center. Bring your hands to the floor in front of you and just walk them forward. Find a real loose, simple forward fold. Walk them out as far as you can and let your head come down, let your neck disengage. Breathe into your lower back. Walk your hands back in towards you, press up to a seating arm. Now let's come up onto our hands and knees. You can just tip to one side, swing the legs around. Open your hands way up, bring your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees. Table pose. And we'll take a few breaths with cow and cat. Inhale, bring your heart forward, let your head and tailbone go up. There's cow. Exhale, draw your heart up, let your head and tailbone come down, and there's cat. And just follow your breath. We don't have to go at the same pace. Tune into how the movement helps the breath and the breath helps the movement. Lungs want to fill as you draw your heart forward, and they want to empty out as you draw your heart up. Your body curves one way and the other. It encourages your diaphragm to move. After your next exhale, come back to table with your back sort of parallel to the ground. Reach back with your left foot, press the ball of your foot against the ground. Feel your heel moving away from your tailbone as the leg lengthens out. With an inhale, reach your right arm forward, thumb pointing up. Fingertips reaching towards the wall. With an inhale, pick your left foot up and reach straight back as if to make a footprint on the other wall. Bend the leg, reach back, see if you can take a bind. Can you grab your foot or your ankle, or your pant leg? If you can, kick against your hand. Lifting your knee, looking forward, opening the midline of the shoulder. Release the bind, let your knee and your hands come down. Reach back and press into the ball of your right foot. Take a couple breaths. With an inhale, reach your left arm forward. On the next inhale, pick your right foot up, reach straight back. Bend your leg, reach your hand back, see about that bind, stretching the quads. Release and lower down. Bring your big toes to touch. Widen your knees if you like. We're gonna to go to child's pose. Sit back towards your heels. Walk your hands forward. 
let your head come right down to the floor. If your head doesn't quite reach the floor, maybe you stack your hands and make a pillow for your forehead. Rest your head on the back of your hands. You might also put a yoga block here or an actual pillow under your forehead. You want your head to rest on something so your neck will disengage. And feel into what your breathing does in child's pose. As you breathe in, your upper body expands. And as you breathe out, think of your hips settling back and down. Maybe there's a little movement, maybe it's just a thought. If it doesn't feel good to reach your hands forward, you might reach them back by your feet instead and let your shoulders disengage. Even more passive pose. Inhale, slowly make your way forward and up, back to table. Step your left foot up between your hands. It might take more than one step. If you have yoga blocks and you put them under your hands, it gives you more room to move your leg. Bring your hands to your thigh or your knee and stand your torso up. And we wanna find steadiness here in this lunge position. Things we can do to feel steadier, put this knee above this ankle. Put the back hip above the back knee and check the alignment of the back leg. See that it's straight behind the knee. If it's off to one side or the other, make you more wobbly. And do a rocking movement in the hips. Exhale, sink forward. Inhale, glide back. And you can keep one hand or both hand on your knee for steadiness, or maybe you bring your arms up at the top of the movement, bring them down as you come forward. You might do cactus arms. You might lower your arms parallel to the ground as you rock forward. At the top of the movement, let's twist. Reach your left hand forward and reach your right hand back and twist to your right. And if you're too wobbly, you can always bring the left hand to the leg. Come back through center and twist the other way. And again, you could always bring a hand to this leg if you start to feel too wobbly. Come back through center. Exhaling, bring your hands down and step the left knee back. Step the right foot forward. And do all that on the other side. Bring your hands to the leg. Bring yourself up, find steadiness. Check out the alignment of everything. Start to rock, exhale, sink forward. Inhale, glide back and add in the arm movements if and when you like. Exhaling, arms come down. Inhaling, arms go up. And the rocking in the hips can be as big or small as you like. From the top of the movement, let's twist first to the left. Come back through center, then twist the other way. Come back through center. Exhale, bring your hands down. And then step your left foot up to meet your right, come to forward fold. Play with bending and straightening your legs. So options in forward fold, you can sway back and forth. Your hands might be on the ground, resting or dragging on the ground. Might come to blocks if you've got blocks. Many folks like to hold onto their elbows or clasp their hands behind their head to get some traction in the neck. Let the weight of the arms draw the head towards the floor and lengthen the neck. 
And we've got a late arrival. Come on in. Join us. If your hands aren't hanging down, they're doing something else, let them hang down again. And gently nod your head, yes. And shake your head, no. Inhale, lift up halfway, rest your hands on the front of your legs and push against your legs. Feel for the crown of your head, reaching forward away from your tailbone, your spine lengthening out roughly parallel to the ground. With an exhale, relax down. Inhale, roll up to standing, hands overhead, palms together. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Let your hands hang at your sides. Raise your right shoulder up towards your ear. Shift it back and let it down. And then your left shoulder up, and back and down. Inhale, reach out to the sides. As you exhale, reach for your shoulder blades and hug yourself, or if you like, come to eagle arms. Twine your arms together, press your palms together. If you're doing the eagle arms, reach your elbows and hands up and out, away from your face and your chest. Inhale, spread your wings. As you exhale, cross your arms the other way. Grab your shoulder blades or take your eagle arms, opening the space between the shoulder blades, the back of the heart space. Inhale, open up. Exhale, let your arms down. Inhale, your arms out and up overhead. Interlace your fingers. Flip your palms up and look up at your hands and lift up your heart. Perhaps your hips drift forward, your hands and your head drift back, depending on how your back is feeling this morning. Maybe you deepen the bend. Inhale to come upright again. Exhale to bend to the right, feel full length through both arms. Try not to lift your left heel off the floor. Try not to let the left shoulder curl forward past your ear. Inhale, come on up. As you exhale, bend to the left. Keeping the right heel grounded, right shoulder back. Inhale, come up to center. And exhale, let your arms come down. Pause for a drink of water. Welcome to our friend who arrived late. We'll start into some gentle sun salutation movements. Inhale your arms up overhead. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. We'll build slowly into the first one, bit by bit. Inhale up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, roll to standing, hands overhead. Exhale, hands to heart. We'll repeat that and then move on. Inhale up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands and step back to plank. Or maybe you're walking your hands forward to come to plank, depending on how you're set up in your space. We'll take a few breaths in the first plank. Anytime we're in plank, you're welcome to make a shorter plank and let your knees down if that's better for you. Let your hips come down in line with your shoulders and heels or your shoulders and knees. With an exhale, slowly lower all the way down. See how slow you can go. Keep your elbows in close by your body. Let everything down. Chest, belly, knees. Untuck your toes. Press your chin. Press into your hands. Inhale, lift your head and chest. So maybe it's just a low cobra on the first one. 
So each time we come through this sun salutation series, do the heart opener that works for you. Listen to your lower back. These are all heart openers, low cobra. Anything through this range is cobra. If you lift the knees, it's upward facing dog. But see, my heart is doing the same thing in all those postures. So let's exhale, rock back through table. Curl your toes under, press into your feet to lift your knees. Press into your hands to lift your tail downward facing dog, then pedal your feet up and down like we do in our first down dog. And inhale, bend your knees, look forward, exhale, step your feet forward. Or maybe you're stepping your hands back. Both work just fine. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, back down. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, down. Make your way to your plank. This time, maybe just lower halfway, keep your elbows in, drop your knees if you like. Inhale, bring your heart forward for cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, rock back and up to downward facing dog. Make your way from down dog to forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, all the way up. Bring your hands to your heart. Now we'll go through and do that two more times. On this next one, we'll add in extra breaths all along the way and slow the whole thing down. The one after that will go more quickly without the extra breaths. And the combination of the slower one and the quicker one is nicely invigorated. Wet my whistle before we do it. So I can keep talking. Inhale up. Exhale here, inhale here, exhale full, inhale here, exhale here, inhale come halfway up, exhale here, inhale here, exhale full, inhale here, exhale here. Make your way to your plank. Take at least one full breath in your plank. Now you can make it really challenging if you want. Exhale lower halfway down and if you can, inhale here. It's okay if you can't, exhale here. Then inhale, bring your heart forward. Maybe you drop your knees, maybe you kept them up. Exhale here, inhale here. Exhale back and up to downward dog. Inhale and downward dog. Exhale and downward dog. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, make your way to forward fold. Inhale here. Exhale here. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale here. Inhale here. Exhale, fold. Inhale here. Exhale here. Inhale all the way up, hands overhead. Exhale here. Inhale here. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale here. Exhale here. Now that quicker one. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale halfway up. Exhale down. Make your way to plank, and it's okay if you're not quite as quick as I am. Follow along. You know where we're going. Exhale, come halfway or all the way. Inhale, bring your heart forward. Exhale, back and up. Come back to forward fold. Lift halfway up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Drop your hands to your sides. If you like, close your eyes. 
You just feel the energy coursing through your body, taking in the gentle swaying of your body as you stand there, just breathing, noticing, inventorying what's going on. Maybe check in with the mental notes you made at the start of class. Any trouble spots you might have had, how are they feeling now? Where's your intention? Did you set an intention? What was that again? Let your eyes open if they're closed. We'll play around with some balancing poses. If you know that that's tricky for you and you'd like the support of a wall nearby or a chair or a desk, some other piece of furniture, don't use a chair on wheels. It's sometimes nice when you go to stand on one leg to have something to grab onto. Bring your hands to your heart. Set your gaze on something straight ahead at eye level that's not going to move. And shift your weight from one leg to the other with your feet on the floor. And we're gonna play with exploring tree pose. Nice, gentle, and accessible entry into it. Bring the weight into your right leg. Turn your left toes out so your feet are perpendicular. And it's okay to look down and check from the feet perpendicular. And if they're not quite per perpendicular, that's okay. But that's what you're aiming at. And the right knee stays soft and bouncy like a nice shock absorber. Start to bring your left heel onto your right ankle. So you're up on the ball, your left foot. So that's tree pose there. Tree pose might also be the sole of your foot on your calf. Those two shapes often fit nicely together for many of us. The one thing you don't ever want to do is press sideways on your knee. So the other option you might do is to put your foot on your thigh if that's doable for you, but you don't want to press sideways on your knee. Your knee doesn't really want to move that way. And your hands might stay here. The branches of your tree might explore other shapes. You can put your foot down and pick it up anytime and start over. Maybe you choose to do that or maybe you fall. If you fall, you're human. If you get up, you're yoke. There might be breeze in the branches of your tree or your tree might be more stiff. Make sure you're breathing because all the trees need air. If your hands are elsewhere, bring them back to your heart. Pivot your knee forward, let your foot down. It usually feels good to shake the leg you were standing on and shake anything else. Maybe you shake the other one, shake your arms, shake your face, do a little dance. I like to just shake everything. When you're ready, bring your hands back here and shift side to side a few times. Reground your feet, reset your hips. Reset your gaze. When you're ready, drop the weight into your left leg. Turn your right toes out. Draw your right heel up, left ankle. If you like, maybe to your calf. If you like, maybe to your thigh. And let your arms do what they want. Maybe they do the same thing or maybe they do something different. And it's always an exploration. I taught another class earlier. And oddly enough, in the earlier class, which wasn't a gentle class, I could not get my feet to stay on my thighs. <laughs> so I just had my foot on my calf. And for whatever reason, now it's staying on my thigh. The earlier class was outdoors. Maybe it was the sweat factor. <laughs> sometimes the clothing is a factor. Sometimes how much sweat is a factor. If you make the mistake of putting on some lotion or something before you practice, your foot won't want to stick with it. Bring your hands back to your heart. Bring your knee forward. Let your foot down. Shake as needed. And we'll play with a standing heart opener now, a standing supported camel pose. Camel pose is a thing we do where we're kneeling down on the floor and our hands are on our heels or ankles. The standing version is a little more accessible. And it's a lot of the same benefits for the upper body. 
If you can, you want to bring your hands to your lower back with your fingers pointing up. And that can be a lot of pressure in your fingers and in your wrists. So don't worry if you can't do that. You can just put your hands here, like pretending you're putting them in your back pockets almost. So either one will work. I'm able to do the fingers up and I like how it feels. You're gonna use the support of your hands, whether they're pointing up or pointing down. Inhale, lift your gaze, lift your heart. Exhale, relax into the support of your hands. Inhale, lift. Exhale, relax. Inhale, lift. Exhale, relax. So maybe your expression of the pose deepens or maybe you're already at the furthest point. You're gonna go and just enjoy a few breaths there. Maybe on the exhales, you go back more. Maybe you're already at the furthest point. Just finding out how much feels beneficial to you. Big inhale, slowly come upright. Release your hands. If your hands feel a little numb, you shake them. If you manage the fingers up, definitely makes your hands go numb. A friend in Boston calls this starfish dance party. And you shake your hands out, starfish dance party, if you like. No long way to do this. <laughs> and let's come down and have a seat. There's actually some things on the floor. It is, after all, gentle class. <laughs> gentle is a relative term. Simple forward fold. Extend your legs in front of you and flex your feet back towards you. Inhale to reach your arms up overhead. Exhale to fold down over your legs. And if your knees want to bend here, just let them bend. Explore maybe deepening the fold with your breath. When you inhale, think of the crown of your head coming forward. And when you exhale, think of lowering down some more. Inhaling, walk your hands up to front of your legs and use your arms to help you sit up. And now you're gonna use your arms to open your legs out to the sides and let your arms keep helping your legs bend the left leg and bring the left foot over to the right side. Maybe it's on your thigh like tree, maybe it's on your knee. Here it's okay to have it on your knee. Pivot your chest, aim your sternum at your right foot, flex your right toes towards you. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, fold down over that extended leg. Again, explore deepening the fold using the breath. Inhaling, think of the crown of your head coming forward. Exhaling, think of yourself lowering a little bit more. We're going to explore this a bit more. Now draw your left hand in towards your heart and reach it out to the left. And then rotate your arm. So turn your thumb down and your palm back and then fold your arm across your lower back and peel that left shoulder back. Reach your arm out again and undo that rotation. So now thumbs up, palms forward. Reach your arm up alongside your head and then over your head, reaching in the direction of the other hand. Reach your arm up and out. Bring it back through center. Bring your hand over by the other hand. Walk your hands up your leg and sit up. And let your arms help your legs switch it up, extend the left leg, bend the right one and bring the foot across. Pivot your torso, flex your left foot. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, maybe lower some more.
Slowly bring your right hand in and reach your right hand out to the right. Rotate the arm, fold it across the lower back, peel the shoulder back. Extend the arm again, rotate the palm forward, reach your arm up and over your head. And slowly, <clears throat> pardon me, reach your arm up and out to the side, back across, over by the other hand, walk your hands up your leg. Grabbing a drink of my water, sneaking a drink of my water. Try throat in here in the AC. Let your arms help your legs extend the right leg back out again. Start to bring your legs in and bring the feet together like we did at the start. Soles of your feet together, but have this big distance here. Have your heels as far away from your pelvis as you can with the soles of your feet together. If there's room to do so, slide your hands under your ankles and grab the floor. If that doesn't work for you, you can reach over your ankles and grab the floor too. And just walk your hands forward as far as you can, kind of making a pretzel, using traction in your arms, come into a forward fold, and let your neck relax, let your head bow down. Breathe into the middle of your lower back. And slowly scoot your hands back, press yourself up to a seat. Keeping the soles of your feet together, draw your heels in as close as you can. Interlace your fingers, grab your toes in both hands. Wriggle on your seat, bring the bones in the seat closer to the ground and tilt the pelvis. Inhale, lengthen up to the crown of your head. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Folding forward with a long spine at first. See how far the long spine will go. When the long spine isn't lowering anymore, then let your neck disengage and let your head bow down towards the ground and breathe in towards your hips. Inhale, slowly sit yourself up and let your arms help your legs here. Nudge your knees up towards each other. Rest your feet on the floor. Rest your hands on the floor out past your hips. Wiggle your feet further apart, maybe the width of a mat if you're on a mat. Let your knees go back and forth. just as far as they want to go. Maybe as they go down to one side, turn your head to the other side. Let your head turn through center as they come across. We can get a little more twisty. Bring your feet in closer, set your feet this far apart. Two fists between the tops of the feet. It's about the same width apart as your hip sockets are from each other. Bring your hands behind you, scoot forward, lower onto your forearms and onto your back. I'm actually gonna face this way. Keep the head closer to the microphone. 
So you end up down on your back, reach your hands towards your feet and slide your feet towards your hands. So your heels are as close to your butt as they'll go. Press into the soles of your feet. Inhale, lift your hips up, coming to bridge pose. If you want to go further here, you might wiggle your shoulder blades in towards each other and clasp your hands under you and reach your knuckles towards your heels. Hips reaching up, knees drawing forward towards the toes, neck relaxed. Sometimes we scrunch up our neck. If you're clasping your hands, unclasp them. Exhale slowly, let your hips come down. How slow can you go? And explore bridge pose on your own for a minute, inhaling to go up and exhaling to go down. Find your own challenges. You could make it less challenging by taking extra breaths at the bottom of the movement or make it more challenging by going up higher, by moving more slowly, by taking extra breaths at the top, we're repeating the clasp of the hands, shoulder blades drawing in towards each other, knuckles drawing towards the heels. If you have blocks, you might take supported bridge, lift up, place a block under your sacrum and come to rest on top of the block. Let the block do the work. Get some nice release in your pelvis and lower back. Wherever you are in your bridge exploration, let's make the next exhale down be the last one and just pause for a couple breaths after you've landed. Draw your knees in towards your chest and hug your knees. Explore rocking and rolling movements, massaging your back against the ground. We'll take a real simple cooling down twist. Knees in towards the chest, reach your arms out towards the sides. Feel your shoulder blades pressed to the ground. Now, the closer your knees are to your chest, the deeper the twist will feel. So you can regulate that sensation by repositioning your legs. You know, let your legs fall to the left, turn your head to the right, and keep your shoulders grounded. And don't worry about how far your legs go. So you can make the twist feel more intense by bringing your knees in closer or less intense by moving them a bit further away from your chest. And slowly bring your head and your knees back through center and just let that movement continue. So you twist the other way. Come back to center, reach your feet up, reach your hands up to grab your legs or feet however you like, play with bending and straightening your arms and legs in happy baby pose, which is just one way to invert. If there's another inversion you'd rather do, please feel free to do it.
lots of different ways we can bring the legs and the feet higher than the heart to let the lower extremities drain. Undoing the effects of gravity and doing some of what happens in all the time we spend standing and sitting and walking when things get stuck in the feet and the legs. And whatever movement feels good, a little rocking back massage, maybe tipping to one side, maybe you move a little, maybe you move a lot. You can invert for as long as you like. When you feel complete, make your way to your final resting pose. Just breathe and integrate the benefits of your practice. So maybe that's the standard closing posture of corpse pose, Shavasana, legs extended, feet splayed open, hands resting by your sides, eyes closed if you like. But that's just one option if that's not comfortable please get comfortable. If your lower back doesn't enjoy lying flat like this, you might plant your feet and let your knees lean towards each other, take the pressure out of your low back. You might come back to the posture we started in with your feet together and your knees splayed out. You might choose to invert more with support by coming over by a wall or a piece of furniture spinning around to put your legs up on the wall. It can be a real nice way to invert and a real nice way to conclude practice. And there are even different options there. You might just rest your heels on the wall. You might bring the soles of your feet to the wall. You might even bring your feet together on the wall and let your knees sway out. You can conclude practice in any posture where you can be comfortably still for a few minutes to just breathe and absorb the benefits of your work. You might focus on your breathing as a simple way to meditate. You might come back to an intention you had set for your practice to reflect upon that intention. How well did it serve you in practice? How might you further carry that intention into the rest of your day and take your yoga off the mat when you're done here? You may simply opt to give your mind permission to wander off. Not trying to focus on anything. Not trying not to focus. Just drifting. Thoughts will come and go. Maybe imagine them as clouds drifting on the breeze. Let each one go, knowing another one may come. Maybe not. Maybe sooner. Maybe later. Maybe picture your body lying on the floor, scanning yourself, checking in, picturing your forehead, seeing if maybe there's a little crinkle there. Maybe you were thinking of something and you didn't know you had a thought stuck. Maybe you can let that thought go, let that wrinkle smooth out. Thinking of the weight of your head, your neck nice and relaxed, head heavy on the ground, shoulders 
melting down a bit more with each exhale. Passive weight of those strong arms that carried you through practice. Your hands at rest. Just check in with each point of contact on the ground. Notice how everything feels. Notice what's changed. Notice what hasn't. Notice if you can't tell whether something changed from the start of practice until now. Not being able to tell is just something else to notice. Start to give yourself some deeper breaths. Nice and slowly invite small movements back to your body. Gradually letting the movements lead to bigger and bigger movements. Taking your time, moving mindfully and gently. When you're ready for bigger movements, and eventually sit yourself up. If you like, bring your hands up to your heart. Thank you for sharing this practice today. The light within me sees, honors, and bows to that same light within you. Namaste. Please visit us online at urbanyoga.org or on Facebook at Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center. Check out the class schedule. We have classes every day with different teachers, different times, in different places and visit the digital tip jar to support our efforts here teaching on Zoom. You can contribute via PayPal or Zelle or Venmo. And I love getting questions and feedback, always welcome. And that goes for the folks watching later on YouTube too, use the comments. Thank you. <laughs>